Uh, hello and good morning. I'm Stephen Cook with Cooksaw Manufacturing and we're doing a series of videos and trying to put out one a week for some amount of time. And uh, this morning I wanted to talk to you about tensioning. We get a lot of questions about how much tension should I put on my blade. And a, a very good question. Uh, some things that we run into and have run into uh, through the years uh, concerning that is, is it affects the blade life. Uh, when you get down to it. it and it also highly affects uh, the quality of your cut. And so I'm going to show you a tensiometer here in a minute and, uh, and, and tell you about the tension that you would need and to use through this. But I'll give you some just some practical uh, ways to, to know about that. If you're having excessive blade breakage or short life on your on your blades, then uh, this would be one thing. There are many things you'd look at, but this would be one thing uh, to consider. Uh, if you're over tensioning your blade, it will shorten the life of the blade. Uh, as I said, <laughs> there are many things that can cause it from out of balance wheels. We'll show some of that sometime, and and other things. But um, if you're having excessive blade breakage, one thing you do is just kind of back off on the amount of tension you've got. Everybody has a little different way of doing it. We have a spring-loaded um, tension. Uh, hydraulic presses a spring out, but you can just back off, and we have a mark that that comes to so that it always uh, comes to the same place, no matter if your blade is a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, half inch or whatever. It always pulls the same tension, and uh, we like that spring tension device, and we'll show that on a sawmill in the future. But uh, if your blades are breaking, you feel like you're not getting enough life, then back off uh, one pump or, or one turn or uh, one little bit if you've got a mark, those kind of things, and, and then see how it solves. Ultimately, what you want to do is have the least amount of tension to be able to saw and get the performance that you need to get. If you're in a high production resaw application, you want to fly through that thing. You've got people standing down there that need to take those boards off and you're really having to pump it out. If you're in a, just in a, a, a small situation, whether it's custom cutting or, or you're just cutting a few logs for yourself, and you cut the board and, and you're, you're over here hauling it off while the thing sits still, well, you may just want to saw a little slower and move the board while you're sawing. So it, it, it all matters according to uh, your situation. But if you're, if you're not having to have the high production, back off on your tension and uh, you'll get, you should see your blade life get a little bit better, uh, especially if it's breaking uh, very prematurely. You should also be uh, in, a, in a portable bandsaw mill, uh, get two or three sharpenings at least. And some people will laugh at that because some people are going to get ten sharpenings. Uh, it's all according to how dull you run your blade, how much tension you're putting on it. And we say that stresses accumulate in that metal. So according to how much stress you put on it before you take it off and sharpen it. Obviously, if you take it off every five minutes, uh, you know, being a little facetious there, but if you took it off every five minutes and sharpened it, uh, you might get 50 sharpening. So you can, you can extrapolate that to an hour or two hours or three hours. And you've got to determine, uh, you know, when it's getting dull to take it off. And, and so there's a balance between all of these things, the tension and, and all of these things. But the less tension you can run, the better it is for the blade, the less stress you're putting into that blade. Technically, if you jack that thing enough with a hydraulic jack, you should be able to pull it completely in two. Uh, additionally, when you um, are sawing, when you run into the end of that log, uh, we built our and we we built our mills and adjust ours in such a way, and we have that spring tension so that we can hit the back of that log and not veer up or down. We go straight into that cut, and that's about having your machine adjusted properly uh, and having the right tension. If you have too low a tension, it is going to act like a little bit of a noodle, and it's going to, to act different ways. But there is a point where it'll stiffen up enough, and you can run at the speed you need to run and, um, and, and go through that cut. Now I'm going to show you a gauge uh, that we have and we sell, and I'm not necessarily trying to sell you this gauge. I'm just going to show it to you because uh, this is uh, a gauge that, that we have and we sell, and it measures the stretch of the blade. Um, this uh, arm over here, it has a dial indicator, and this actually moves. I'll move it a lot. Well, that's, that's the maximum you can even see it move. 
but it's kind of like a dial indicator if, you, if you've dealt with machine work. And it's only going to move just a, a quarter, a little over a quarter of a turn, actually. But the blade, when you tension it up, actually, this clamps on one side and this clamps, uh, well, on the blade. And then when you, you, you have it uh, totally loose, clamp it on there, and when you tighten it up, uh, it will actually move and you'll see this dial move and that's how you know how many thousands and this has uh, or how many thousand pounds or PSI you're going to put on it and this has a, a dial on it that, that will read that. I'll demonstrate that in a, in a later video. Uh, we, this comes and, and it tells a uh, procedure but we've, we've done our own uh, 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 little insert here that I'll just read to you. Uh, tensile pound guide for Cook Super Sharp Blade and XL Blades. Uh, essentially, on a one inch, an inch and a quarter blade, we're wanting 16 to 17,000 tensile pounds. Inch and a half, uh, 17,000 to 18,000 tensile pounds. Uh, inch and a half, 050, 055, we go 18 to 20,000 pounds. Two inch, uh, 18 to 22,000 pounds. And you can see the more metal we have, the more pressure we can put and feel uh, comfortable. Uh, I think this, this right here says uh, 25,000 to 30 PSI. Well, you can see we're on the lower side of that because we get the production that we need at lesser poundages. And so, uh, again, that, that helps with the life. If you don't, are not worried about it and you're getting excellent life, and uh, maybe you're only going to run eight hours at a time, uh, yeah, run an eight hour shift and throw the blade away. Some people do that. Sometimes the product you're making is worth that. You may contention that thing on up to the 25 or maybe even 30,000 pounds, but you are going to cut back on the life of your blade. Uh, the more you tension it, the stiffer you get it. Just, it just makes sense. Um, but it will shorten the life of that blade in the long run. And so we're looking for that happy medium, that point of diminishing return. We're, we're lower uh, on our tension to the point that uh, we can still make the production that we need to make with the amount of uh, labor that we have there, whether it's one, two, or three people, and, uh, so, and, and, and get the life of the blade. So we want long life in, in everything we do in the best way we can. So think that'll help you and be interesting to you. Maybe this video hadn't gotten too long, but we will also de demonstrate how this works in another video.